Paul tells us of the existence of sin, of original sin in his letter to the Romans. Original sin is the basis for all sin in the world. It is the foundation of the absence or denial of God in the lives of men and women. In Genesis of the Bible, we read the story of Adam, the first man, a representative of the human race as our representative. Adam was created holy and a perfect example of a complete and just human being. But Adam chose to follow his own choices, his own ways, rather than the ways of his creator. His will was superimposed on the will of God, and so disorder, death and t deterioration entered this world. In sending us his son, Jesus Christ, God offers to all men and women a chance of a new creation. A creation which is once more holy, just and eternally life-giving. Jesus Christ revealed the healing, guiding hand of God in our world. He offers it to all who would accept it. The pride, the desire for self-worship and a rejection of God's ways recur. But we know that we are not expected to overcome these hurdles, these hardships alone. Jesus Christ told us of the kingdom of God. He told us the good news that we are redeemed, sanctified and made one with our Heavenly Father and through our baptism. In baptism we are plunged into water which symbolise the watery ferment in the story of creation but also reminds us of water as a source of life. What is the matter with our world today? We can put people on the moon. We can fly the Atlantic in a few hours. We can watch events on the other side of the world as they happen. In the field of technology, men and women have made tremendous progress. But when it comes to the business of living together in peace, caring and loving for one another, we seem to have made little or no progress at all in some respects. The way in which we hurt and destroy one another seems to have got worse. At times it can feel as though we are going backwards, not forwards. And the really numbing thing about the evil we see around us is the feeling that we, as individuals, can do little or nothing about it. We feel helpless. So what is the matter with us? What is, what is causing all this? But yet the disease is not only in the world around us, it is in ourselves. We too do our share of harm to others. We're selfish, we're cruel. We fail to love day in and day out. The conclusion is that there is something wrong with men and women. Somehow, somewhere along the line, we get involved with sin. There is no need at this point to look back at the beginnings of human history to find out precisely how we got into this situation. The important point is that this situation is a fact. It is plain for all to see. If we have any doubts about our world's need for redemption, for a fresh start, we need to look no further than today's news bulletin. If we have any doubt about our personal need of redemption, we need to look no further than our own hearts. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save what was lost. The idea of being lost is a good description of what sin means. When we are lost, we have the right road, we're on the wrong road. We're wandering aimlessly with no sense of purpose or direction. Men and women turned away from God, they're lost. They have broken off all contact with God, who alone gives meaning and purpose to life. They become like the airline pilot trying to land in the fog, having lost contact with God.